All right, welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas, and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to perform a linear discriminant analysis using Python or with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn here. Now, with linear discriminant analysis, you are primarily trying to do classification. That is your goal here. And we're not going to go into the statistics in a great detail, but what linear discriminant analysis does is it draws these things called discriminants. And they're trying to draw discriminants in a way that it separates um, your, your, um, your data based on whatever categorical data you're, you're using. So it could be like gender, or it could be job or whatever, or degree, whatever. You're trying to separate them. Generally, you want to have only you know two groups or two classes, but I mean, you can't do more than that, I guess, if, if I'm assuming it's possible. But we're not going to get into great detail about the actual statistical side of it. We're really going to focus instead on the actual uh, process of using Python to achieve this. So if you look here closely, what we're going to do here is we're going to try to classify some data based on marital status, whether they're single or married, uh, based on their academic output and other factors related to academics. So we're using the biochemist data set here. So that's what we're looking at. So right here in this first, the first important cell, we kind of have the different modules that we're going to be using, pandas, uh, pi data set, matplotlib. In line four, we're going to be using a, a discriminant analysis here. LDA for short, and uh, we're also going to be, you know, splitting our data using the train test split a function, and we're going to be using the classification report as well as well as metrics. So let's go ahead and start our experience here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our data set. Of course, we got to load our modules first. That's the first thing. And now, right here in the second cell, you can see I'm going to load the uh, biochemist data set, and we're going to take a look at that. So you can see here we have several variables here, about five. And so our variable of interest, if you will, our outcome variable is going to be marital status here, MAR. And so there's lots of other variables here, like you know what their uh, gender, whether they're male or female, how, how many kids they have, the, their PhD, their uh, prestige or whatever, things like that. And if you want to know more information about this, you can always look at the data set on your own time. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to create some dummy variables because we have several categorical variables here and you can't quite run them as they are. We have to make dummies out of them. And so, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. So let me just, there we go. And there's a little bit of extra white space around here that we don't need. So we're going to create a, a dummy variable for gender. And we're going to create a dummy variable for marital status. You cannot put it in as is. You have to put it in as only numbers. And so in line one, we're setting up our dummy variable for gender. So, and then we're going to add that variable to our original data set called DF. And then we repeat this process in lines three and four. But this time we're making a dummy variable for marital status. So if they're married, it'll be like a one. If they're not married, it's a zero. I forget exactly how I did it, but we will see in a second. So press control enter and now you can see how by using the pd.getdummies function here how we get this nice little beautiful output so when they're a man there's a one here when they're a woman it's going to be a one here now again i don't want to teach everything about statistics but you're only going to use one of these two columns here for gender either the man or the woman same thing for marital status you're either going to use the married variable or you're going to use single whichever one you pick and so that is how we do this. And so we got four variables technically, but we're only going to use two of them. And so to do this, just to make sure it's clear, we uh, created something called a dummies and we use PD that's pandas dot get. And then we call this from the data frame, uh, the fem the fem variable. And then we concatenated this into our original uh, data frame. Then if you look closely, you can see that lines one, three and line one are the same because I don't need to say what I did inside the dummy variable. So I just overwrote it this time for marital status. And then I, I added it to my original data frame. And the df.head just gives us the output for the first five rows. Now we're going to start setting up our independent and dependent variables. So we're going to make basically, you know, uh, a little data frame called X and a little data frame called Y, excuse me. 
And so here's what we're doing. If you look at row number one here, we are looking at, these are our five dependent, or excuse me, independent variables. So if they're a man, uh, kids, PhD, they're M-E-N-T and art. That's what we're looking at there. And then our dependent variable is married or not. So we care more about if they're married rather than if they're single. That's what we care about. And I can easily swap out you know, men for women if I wanted to. I, that's, this is just what I picked. Now next we have to create our train and test set. We're still preparing our data. And so we're, gonna, we're going to do a 70-30 split. There's other ways that this can be done. And sometimes you make you know, three different divisions of your data. We're just gonna do two. And so here we go. Uh, right here, X train, comma, 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 all this stuff is setting up my train and test set. And so you separate them by a comma, then you put an equal sign. And then right here, we have the train test split. This is the actual function we're using. X is right there in the previous cell right here, in case you forgot. Y, the next guy over, is right here in, the right here in this cell. And then the size of the test set is gonna be 0.3. That stands for you know 30% basically. And the random state, that is the seed number so that you can reproduce your results. So I set the seed to zero. So, oops, oh, I forgot to run the cell before. And so now this should work. There we go. Now comes the moment of truth. We're going to actually train and test our data set. And so there's three little lines of code for this cell that I need to show you. All right, so in line one, we kind of create an instance of our actual classifier. And then in line two, we use the dot fit method and we take our data here, X train and Y train. And then just so you have an idea of the performance, I'm going to put the actual score right here in line three. That's what's gonna come out there. And it gives us an idea of the accuracy of our model. So press control enter. And so there's a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes that you can't quite see here, but our overall accuracy is you know about 73%, which I don't know, for the social sciences is not too bad that you're able to predict whether someone is married, you know, based on the variables in this particular data set. Now we have to do our actual testing. And so we have to predict first. That's the first thing we're going to do right here. So I use the CLF dot and then dot predict method. And I'm going to use my data X test. Obviously we ran that. Trust me, something happened. And then uh, we're just going to take a quick look at this so we can see what it looks like. And so here's the output. So remember, every time you see a one, that indicates that the model predicted that that person is married. Every time you see a zero, this is telling us that the model predicted that that particular person is not married, okay? But we're not satisfied. We need to evaluate this and see how our model did. How, how strong was it at predicting these things? And so we paste right here and we get a nice little output. Okay, so we get the precision, the recall, the F1 score, all these things. And, you know, we're not going to go over the details of all these. This is like taking into account, <clears throat> you know, false positives and false negatives and things of that nature. But our overall, our overall accuracy is, you know, 71%, which is not too bad, you know. Um, again, again, how strong the prediction needs to be, how accurate it needs to be really depends on the context and, you know, the discipline. So we have 71% accuracy. Remember, you know, anything above 50% means for that, you know, it's better than guessing. <laughs> However, you would like to see that. Now we can also make a visualization. We're going to make something called an ROC curve. And this is really kind of difficult to explain, but the ROC curve, it kind of gives you an idea. Again, we're talking about false positives, false negatives, and our true positives and false positives. And it's a, it's a picture. It's better to see it. And then I will try to walk you through the code. So. Let's see here. Now, this dotted black line is like worst case. It's a straight line. It means that your model is not doing a, ver a very good job at uh, beyond guessing. And so you can see here as it curves, the more it curves up into the upper left hand corner, the better your model is at discriminating or classifying the, uh, the, the people in your model. And so you can see here, we got a, a 0.67, I believe is what the answer is, which is not bad. It can go all the way up to one, obviously. So that's what's happening in the actual output or the actual picture. Now, if you take a look at all this code here, it's, it's just kind of, you know, you know, a lot of stuff happening. So we have here um, three little things. Let me see if I can make another sale here at the bottom. Let's see here. So false positive rate. 
So here's what's happening. Up here, we have something called the FPR. That's the false positive rate, then the true positive rate, then the thresholds. All these things are being stored at the same time using metrics and then the, the method.roc curve. And this is the data that's going inside it. So this is based off the results of the uh, test data. All right. And so if you put these in individually down here below, you can see we got FPR here. I believe that's probably the score right there. Let's see here. Yeah, that's the score right there. False positive rate. And then if you change that and we put the T, you can see all these if you really want it to. Again, here's the false positive rate or true positive rate, excuse me. And then, you know, you could probably even type in thresholds. Yeah, so those are the thresholds right there. And you can see how all this is being done simultaneously, simultaneously using this particular method right here. And then we have the ROC underscore AUC here. Area under the curve is what that stands for. Uh, and so we have metric dot AUC and then you get the output there. And so again, this is just, you know, one number probably. Yeah, one number. That's the same number that you can see in the plot right there. That's what's happening in this particular line of code. And then the rest of this stuff, now this is not as complicated because this is just making the visualization. And so we uh, we set up the, the, pl uh, the plot right here. Then we put in these data right here, FPR, TPR, and a, and a label. That's what's happening here. And then in line six, line six is giving us kind of like our our reference point. So line six is making this dotted line right here. You don't have to make this, but it's again, it gives you a visual about how much better or how much worse your model is doing to, you know, the standard of like worst case, if you will. And then we just put a legend in the lower right hand corner. And that's where this is right here. And so that's how this is set up. So again, you must have some sort of a background and be familiar with the ROC Receiver operator curve is what I believe that acronym stands for and AUC stands for area under the curve. Again, these are ideals that harken back, you know, to calculus, if you will. So let's see if we can review what we talked about and conclude this video. So in this video, we took a look at linear discriminant analysis, which allows you to discriminate or to separate um, your respondents into to various groups based on whatever independent variables you are using. Now, we didn't talk too much about the statistical side of this and a lot of the output was also omitted from this video to keep it short but to keep it as simple as possible we are trying to classify people whether they are married or single based on other variables that were available in this data set so we took a very simple a very small data set called biochemist we put their marital status as the dependent variable we kept the other variables as they were we did have to make some dummy variables that made things a little bit more complicated so we had to do that as well. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I also had to be honest that sometimes it's not best to use categorical variables as independence when you're doing linear discriminant analysis, but we did it and it worked out fine in this particular case, but I need to caution you about that. And so um, this is where we set up our different data sets. The X stands for all of our independent variables. We, could, we put them inside a data frame here like this. And then our Ys are also were separated into their own little data set, if you will, for calculation purposes. Then we had to create our train and test set. We created our model. We got a, a, a accuracy, excuse me, of 72.8%. Then we did our prediction. And for our, for our test set, we got an accuracy of 71%. Because there's such consistency between the training and the test set in terms of accuracy, it gives the indication that our our model that we developed might generalize well because the, they were so close to each other. And then lastly, at the end, what I mean by close to each other in terms of accuracy. And then at the end of our demonstration today, we created a ROC curve. The dotted black line is just a reference line, if you will. And then the blue line represents the actual performance of our model. And the ROC curve is kind of comparing false positive rate to true positive rate, if you will. And the more it curves into the upper left hand corner, the better it is at distinguishing between those, if you will. And so this is what we found. So I would like to thank you for watching today. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques and you take care.